Good morning. My name is Aaron Scheel. I'm the operator training manager here at Ziegler Cat. This morning we're going to take advantage of a little time and uh, talk about our next gen excavators. We happen to be standing in front of a 323 currently, uh, but a lot of the stuff that we're going to talk about is going to be consistent from the 313, the smallest of the next gen uh, machines, excavators, all the way up through the 395, the largest. So not only is that an awesome thing for uh, us as trainers to have a, a common theme, uh, but for operators. So if an operator gets out of a small one into a larger one, uh, a lot of commonality, a lot of consistency between the cabs especially. There's going to be some service points and some things like that obviously that are different, um, but some real good commonality through the operating the controls, the uh, cab. So we'll go ahead and get started. So let's start by heck um, just behind the, the cab here. So uh, one of the neat, nice things, cab air filter behind the keyed uh, lock here, easy to access, can be able to clean out that cab air filter. Uh, this first compartment behind the cab here. Our air filter is located in here, windshield washer fluid, easy access to the, the uh, batteries. Again, nice, uh, you're going to find throughout this whole thing the theme of uh, simplicity. So if it's easy, operators will check on it, they'll take care of it. Um, when it's hard to get to and, and unsafe and it's just not going to happen. So Hat, hats off to the engineering staff that uh, worked that through. Next door back, our cooling package. You can see it's all tall and um, spread out. That's one of the reasons why it's as high as it is. Uh, what that gives us is a single layer. So we're not having layer after layer of coolers. Single one, single pane. We do have some screens that are able to take out and clean. Our coolant level sight glass see-through tank. So our shunt tank for the coolant is going to be located on this side. So we're going to able to actually on this 320 machine, we're going to be able to do all of our level checks from the ground, which is an awesome safety feature. Again, if it's going to be easy, operators will do it. Um, so that's where our, our coolant tank is going to be located. One of the things I want to point out as we go around is the location of our cameras. We On this machine, uh, does have the four camera uh, option on it. So our camera on the yeah, left side, we're going to be able to swipe through that monitor with our two fingers and find which view is going to fit for what our application is. It also gives us the ability to have a 360 bird's eye view. So we're able to be above the machine and get a full 360 view so we can see if anything has moved into our work range. <coughs> All right. So moving on, our track frames and all that is again, we have always had a good robust track frame. Uh, that is going to stay the, stay the same. We come around here, the back side of the machine is our other camera, so our view, rear view camera. Okay, 323, uh, the 20 ton class, this does have a little heavier counterweight and a little bit more horsepower. Again, be a, our real productive machine in that 320 size class. We get under the uh, right rear corner, the hydraulic compartment. Um, spend a second or two here talking about how simple this is. It almost looks like they forgot stuff, right, from what we're used to seeing. Very simple. Uh, awesome. Nice and clean, easy to, to uh, service if needed, uh, but nice and simple. Another industry first here, uh, ground level engine oil check on an excavator. It just is uncommon, unheard of. So. That's a great feature. The most dangerous part of the day is the operator getting on and off the machine, so we can limit that. Fuel water separator, fuel filter. The other daily level check is our hydraulic oil sight glass. It's going to be just in between the panel and the post here. Uh, traditional location for that. Uh, it is a redesign of the hydraulic oil tank. allows for a smaller tank, smaller capacity, uh, which is a neat, uh, great, great feature there as well. Our emissions package is separate. It's all on its own up here, fit for life. So again, as the uh, not no need to take it out and clean it. One nice feature, things that are thought up through here that you're paying for with a cat, nice and rigid. You know, got a nice rigid frame door here, but things are serviceable. They're not welded in or riveted in. Something as simple as this latch. If we have a latch failure, not replacing that whole door, we can service out the latch and get you back in business. Something else, uh, simple. This starts, uh, you know, taking that rattle out of that latch that could fail that ratch, latch. We have rubber snubbers, just something as simple as that. Bring that out, tighten that up so we get a nice tight fit. Right side camera. 
So it's a toss up for me between what the, uh, the great features that we've got going on in the cab uh, versus this area right here on the machine. This right side access, this is huge. Um, all the years of having to swing up over here and skinning your shins trying to climb up on the front, having this straight forward uh, access is just outstanding. It also affords us the visibility of the right side. All this is sculpted down and low from the cab. I mean, you have such a great view besides the cameras, but you can just easily look out the window and see back way over here. Um, fuel fill, again, I'm a tall guy, but I could probably pretty much reach this from the ground. If not, it's just a simple step up onto the tracks to reach our fuel fill. Going forward into the compartment in the very nose here, diesel exhaust fuel tank. And a nice uh, sight glass here so we can see where our level is so we're not spilling it. If it does spill, it's going to safely get it out onto the track where it's not going to corrode the, the machine up. Uh, but again, ground level, right? So we got to all be able to see our sight glass for our coolant, check our oil, our hydraulic, our diesel exhaust fill, and our hydraulic or our uh, fuel fill all nice and located, basically ground level. All right. So as we move along the machine here, really the boom and the stick uh, staying the same as what we've had in the past. What that affords us to do is the same linkages. The linkage buckets are going to be the same linkage to linkage. Uh, so they didn't change things there, so we're having to whole, fit up a whole different set of buckets and that sort of thing. This one is plumbed uh, with auxiliary hydraulics. Coupler lines. It does not have a coupler on at the moment, but all that stuff is ready to roll. All right, so when we get on this side of the machine, <clears throat> it gives us a chance to start um, talking about our technology suite. So again, like I talked about, 313, smallest, all the way up to the largest, the 395, will have the tech, all the same technology suite standard. We'll have 2D grade with assist. We're going to have payload and e-fence, okay? We'll talk about all those a little bit more in depth, maybe some different videos, but uh, in essence, what they're uh, from a high level, E-Fence, what it's going to allow us to do is build a virtual box around the machine and out in front, which say we're under a bridge or we're along traffic or a building or something like that, we can position the bucket, hit the button. From that point on, we can't move past that point, whether it's up, down, out in front of us, or the side. So we can build a virtual box. So that's E-Fence, a great safety feature there. We have 2D grade. So 2D grade, um, if we have a, say we have an elevation, we know that we want to be three feet down from here. I can reach over, put my tooth on that, at that spot, hit the button, dial in three feet and go. And it'll give me either a, uh, a visual and an auto, audible uh, alarm in the cab, awareness of where we're at. And then if I tie that in with assist, I can literally dig down. It has overcut protection. I can't get below that grade. I simply pull in the stick and it'll grade for me. So great savings for uh, stress for the operator, accuracy. Um, it's just a, it's a really an outstanding feature. The more guys start to use that and understand what it's doing, uh, the more they're using it. Payload, so we also have payload. So we're uh, loading on-road trucks. Um, we're able to set in a target. It'll count down for us as each bucket comes out and goes into the truck, that target goes down. We get a, 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 an alarm when we get close. We can shake off, get that last pass correct, finish off that truck and send them on the road. Soils change in densities from top to bottom in a cut. So some of those first trucks, if you're just going by visual, might be light. As you get to the uh, bottom of that ground, could be heavy. So not only are you not getting enough material out on the road, you could be taking a chance for a, a ticket. So uh, having that payload is huge. All these technologies and all this stuff is happening by these sensors. So we've got a rotation sensor on the pin here. We've got IMU up on the stick, the back of the boom, and in the base of the machine. So that's giving us pitch and roll, it's giving us angle and rotation. And then it all gives us a, a dimension from the tracks to the teeth. So we can not only have height, but we can have a distance as well. So if we hit the button and benchmark, I can tell how far from that point either way from there as well. Again, as an operator sat in a seat 20 plus years doing sewer and water, to have had all this stuff at my fingertips, wow. It's like a tape measure, a ruler, 
grade rod, all that stuff, all at your fingertips at all times. It's just, uh, it'd be fun to do it all over again and have this technology, I'll tell you that. Uh, we do have a laser catcher on this machine for uh, a reference point. Not needed. You can do a touch point if you, if you wanted to, um, but if you want to, to achieve the most accuracy, we're going to use a laser. So we're going to do all our benchmarking. We're going to be on grade. What we're going to do is reference that laser before and after we move to make up for any elevation change the excavator happens to make. Okay? Uh, basement diggers are just eating this thing up. They're digging basements with one guy taking that grade checker out of the hole uh, and just the operator's getting it done. All right, so as we come around along again, the machine, the other fourth camera is going to be just up above the window brow there. Again, give us, like I talked about, that 360 view. So this is where uh, the other big changes happen. So a whole new seat design, new armrests, adjustability is phenomenal. There's just no way that, um, you know, if you're not getting, if you're not comfortable in that thing, you just haven't spent the time to figure out what it is that you can be adjusted because there's adjustments for just about everything. Uh, touch screen, so with 2D, basic 2D screen, we're going to have a touch screen in there, a tablet, so like an Android swipe and touch. Um, if a guy can navigate his cell phone, you've got no problems navigating this thing. Um, adjustability in the uh, joystick, so depending on what your object is for the day, whether you're doing all payload or if you're doing a bunch of grade stuff, we can configure those buttons to do uh, all kinds of different tasks. So it's really configurable. You can save those to the operator. So when you climb in there and uh, key in your number, all those settings come to where, where you had it the last time, which is a great feature as well. Visibility, they've sculpted, pulled uh, things in, narrowed things up. Again, really paying attention to what the operator needs for safety uh, and production. So a very, very comfortable cab. So for that, uh, until we dive deep into some of the other features, I think that's, um, that's a pretty good overview of what our new next-gen excavators have to offer.